You guys know who uh, Joseph Stalin is, right? Former dictator of the Soviet Union. He's as bad as Hitler. He wasn't quite as uh, well-known or flamboyant, um, but he was a guy who killed millions, maybe 10 million people. So in 1936, before World War II, he started The Purge, The Purge. And Stalin uh, did it to give him full authority to wipe out and damage anybody who opposed him on anything. So according to Wikipedia, which is a very good uh, description of the purge, quote, this term automatically made it unnecessary that the ideological errors of a man or men engaged in a controversy be proven made possible the use of the cruelest repression, violating all norms of legality against anyone who in any way disagreed with Stalin, against those who were only suspected of hostile intent, against those who had had bad reputations. The formula enemy of the people was specifically introduced for the purpose of physically annihilating such individuals. Well, right now in America, we have the purge. It is underway. It is called the cancel culture. All right. You know all about it. Now, the far left people are getting it. All right. Case number one, the Philadelphia Inquirer, extremely liberal newspaper. All right. One of its editors, Stan Wisnowski, long time guy there, long time, very well thought of, fired because he allowed a headline over an op-ed piece that said, Buildings Matter too." He got fired because he allowed that headline. The article was from an architect who said, you know, if you loot and burn down buildings, there are a lot of unintended consequences, which is absolutely true. Now, headlines are designed to get you to read the article, all right? So for some reason, the hierarchy at the Philadelphia Inquirer fired this guy because the little leftist running the newsroom didn't like the headline. He loses his job, his livelihood in a snap of a finger. New York Times, perhaps the most diabolical, dishonest media publication in American history. They fire a confirmed leftist named James Bennett, who was the editor of the editorial page. Why? Because he printed an op-ed by Senator Tom Cotton that agreed the President of the United States is allowed and should use the military when governors and mayors cannot protect the American people. That was the op-ed. That was it. And Cotton backed it up with whatever Cotton backed it up. He's a vet. He has a right to that opinion. He's a senator. Because that editorial was printed and okayed by James Bennett, he was fired from his job. This is Stalinism. This is a purge. And no one is safe. We Reported yesterday about the Sacramento Kings basketball announcer, 40 years, fired for saying all lives matter. This is not going to stop. I got to tell you, I am so happy, personally happy, that I run my own news agency and don't have to work for a corporation. I worked for corporations for 45 years. Some of them were good. Some of them were not good. But now, would I want to be in a corporation now when all allegations are convictions and insane stuff gets you fired? Insane stuff? Now, if I were all of those people that I mentioned, I'd sue. But you may or may not win. It is a violation of freedom of speech. You lose your job because you say something and it's not even offensive. But you need to know that this is happening everywhere, everywhere. The police are getting it the worst. But if you say one word in opposition of the far left, not liberals, the far left, somebody's going to run up to the human resources 
complain and you could be out on your butt with no due process whatsoever. This is the worst thing that's come out of this whole protest movement. Awful. I don't even know what to tell you about the universities anymore. I don't even know what to say. So the University of Massachusetts in Boston, they had a nice relationship with the state police in the Commonwealth, all right? State police sometimes used their parking lots to uh, park their vehicles when they were having a parade or a dignitary was coming in. Not anymore. University of Massachusetts, throwing them off. No more cops, no more state cops on campus for any reason. University of Missouri, all right? Lunaticville. Anybody sending their kid to the University of Missouri, you're insane. So they have a kid who's got a petition up to take down a statue of Thomas Jefferson because, quote, he's a racist slave owner, does not deserve to be on our campus. Thomas Jefferson. Okay? The architect, along with James Madison of our Constitution, which is not respected at the University of Missouri. So, is that statue going to come down? Place your bets. Here on Long Island, Hofstra University, they stood up to the radicals. Jefferson's still up there. We'll see. UCLA, a bunch of their professors signed a letter saying that the LAPD violated student rights by taking them into custody for violating the curfew in LA. So the professors are saying there was a legal curfew put into place by the mayor and governor. These kids did violate it, but the LAPD is the is the villain because they arrested the kids when they were out after curfew. UCLA. It's just unbelievable. 